20-ish minutes, 20 minutes, to a recital. I, ow, just hit my head. <laughs> my crazy life of things that I don't deserve continues. If you've watched my last Get Ready With Me vlog about my recital in Schloss Elmo, Germany, you know that I had a crazy travel coming to Europe. But then it got even crazier, but I did not tell you yet about that vlog because at the time of that filming, I had no idea what was to come. Here in Zurich, turn hella mag. Lots of weird emotions. On my way here, it has settled in me that there has been so much anticipation for this recital, just with all the travel craziness. So the night of my recital there, I talked to the owner, who really is just super, super nice to me and I did absolutely nothing to deserve any of this, but I mentioned to him that, you know, I think I have to stay somewhere in Germany, find some friends to crash with because I cannot go back to New York after Germany and then come back to Zurich without a 10-day quarantine. So that was my original plan, and then he said, oh, I have this friend who I'm sure can put you up for free in Zurich. He introduced me to manager of five-star hotel here in Zurich. So, big thank you to Vida Hotel. I will put in a little clip here of my initial reaction. I do not deserve any of this, and please know that I am not suddenly some rich, fancy person. Like with Steinway, it's a collaboration with Vida Hotel. It, I don't know why, how, but they are just letting me stay here, so I thought, I should at least show you what it looks like here. Here it is. Entryway. So many mirrors. So, so many mirrors. Closet. Oh, the closet is here. And I've got two closets. I did not realize this. Oh, cool. And this is... My room. And it's got very fancy jazz in the background. How did I get so lucky? I really don't deserve any of this. Well, the only reason I'm showing you this is because this is my journey after all. So I always encourage everyone to be kind and keep striving. And so hopefully, this doesn't offend you in any way because this really is super fancy and I'm not used to this at all, but people are so nice to me. Also, the hotel managed to find someone that I've never ever met who has a Steinway Grand Piano where I can practice for the entire stay during here before my recital, so. Oh, are these edible? These are edible. Hmm. They look so well arranged, I wondered if they were fake. Of course they're not. And I really, really do not deserve any of this. But thank you for your support. Anyway, thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for just being interested in my journey. Life will get crazy as you get older. And very, very unpredictably crazy. So. I just cannot believe that they would just 
let me stay there for free in exchange for absolutely nothing. In Cantonese, there's a saying called um, and basically it's a skeptical saying of, you know, can there really be such a good thing? And uh, very, very generous people exist in the world. So I can't thank Vida Hotel enough. I basically feel like I've been living here, like it's my own home in Zurich, in that hotel, because I've been here for about 12 days, I believe. It's unbelievable how time flies, and um, this morning I was a bit sentimental because... I was talking to a friend, and I just realized that this might be my last solo recital for really the foreseeable future, because a lot of people are saying that there's nothing going on in 21. I already know that for this year, this is my only confirmed performance recital, solo recital performance. piano concerto performance here a few days ago and I actually had a completely different anticipation of what this piano would be like. I thought it would be a very light piano. It is surprisingly not. Of all the Hamburg Steinways I've ever played in my life so far, not that I've played on that many because I haven't had that many experiences, but in the few dozens that I've probably played on, I've never encountered a Hamburg with such a heavy action. I don't know if you can tell from the keys. See how there's like a lot... So this is not a bad thing, this is just unexpected. You can approach the keys at a much slower rate. It is possible to get a warm sound. Something about Hamburgs in general is that they usually are very light in action and very, very bright and very crystal. This piano has definitely been worked on to achieve this level of heaviness and the action feels unusual. But another explanation for this might be because of this. It is an older Hamburg. Do you hear that? It's nice, it's a very rounded kind of reverb. I know I mentioned this in many times now, but there are many different kinds of reverb, and I'm slowly learning about them. Look at the ceiling, it's a lot of wood, so that's why it's a very circular kind of... There are ones that are very hollow, reverb, and then this is a more rounded one. I probably don't make any sense.
Due to COVID, I think there are time restrictions of how long you can have everyone in the same room. The abridged version now that I'm playing of the program originally had two more Scarlatti Sonatas and a Haydn, but the cut down version now, I just realized, consists of all the different characters of my personality. I don't think there has been a program like this. Only Scarlatti and Schumann. So it's a very personal recital performance for me on top of the fact that this might be my last one, for who knows when. Turned it down super hot on purpose. <laughs> now it really is hot. <laughs> it's happening. I just changed. Oh, I guess I could just show you this way. Um. So I am now. This this is too <laughs> egotistic to do it like that. Okay, I'm gonna go test the piano or not test. It's a bad habit. I should just say I'm going to go say hello to the piano. Gonna tell the lights people how to do the stage lights and I will talk to you a little bit about my sentiments. That's me in case you forgot my name. I have a little bit less than an hour until the start of my concert. Seriously, 2021, I will forever live on YouTube and be just this online person. And, um, well, it's very likely that this will happen, but, um, who knows? So, I just feel like because there's been so much generosity surrounding this recital, surrounding my trip here in Europe, that I really just want to give it all and it's my attempt at giving back through music because of all the generosity that I've experienced and of course I have to thank you for supporting me and especially during these times not only my patrons on Patreon but just even having the online support of having a 
YouTube family to want to listen to my music and uh, who want to come to my recital. I know there are a bunch of you who could not come because of the travel restrictions and the quarantine and just pandemic in general. So hopefully everything will be a bit more back to normal-ish and you can come to my recital someday. But thank you for always supporting and wanting to come to my concerts and buying tickets and yeah, your support means a lot. Did I explain to you my program? I don't think so. Three Scarlatti sonatas. E major, going to A major, going to D minor. Do you catch a pattern? It is called the circle of fifths. Oh, I can explain to you what that means. So, circle of fifths. It means, starting on E, you go down five keys. Go to A, go down five. D. So it's a circle of fifths. It also explains the keys at mixture system. But this is not a music theory tutorial channel, so you can't go Google <laughs> exactly the detailed explanation, but that was actually unintentional. But the reason I had it like that and sequenced the scolottis like that is because of the endings. So last note of the E major is... And then first note. And then last note. First note of the next. And the last note of this. Into the next piece. Schumann. You get it? Everything is linked. <laughs> so I had fun <laughs> somehow thinking of this. That is the reason for the sequence of all the scarlatis going to Papillon and then from Papillon to Fantasy. Well, originally I wanted this recital to be more of a redemption, give myself a second chance to play better than the last time I played it publicly. It's a piece that I always really had a deep connection, emotional connection to it for many personal reasons and just, I know that I won't play it aesthetically highest platonic form of this piece, if that makes any sense. It's just a piece that I hope I can play better than last time, given all the life experiences I've had since last year. I think it's a piece that I will just have to grow with and I just want to play my best at this very time in my life. So that explains my whole program. Thank you for your interest in my playing and in my life. As a pianist, I hope you know how much I care and appreciate your support. I will now keep quiet and I will give you my thoughts about how I did. Hopefully, uh, not so negative one in about an hour and a half. Also due to the pandemic and the rules, I cannot meet you in a normal way, you know, because usually I ask for a meet and greet, but friends and family can't even come backstage. <laughs> so absolutely no one else can be here except myself. So sorry about that. But yeah, that's just the reality. Anyway, camera heavy, hands, tired from holding, so goodbye. <laughs>